In this video, you're going to learn and understand the important details about rendering and upscaling anime videos or edits in 4K, the highest quality. And for all platforms like YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, I'm going to teach you all about the encoders, containers, compression, and bitrate settings so you can also achieve high-quality uploads before the platform's built-in compression applies to your media. Here, I have my final version of my AMV with clips that might have been color graded, but by the very end, I would have a main CC with some quality enhancing effects such as sharpen, noise removing effects, curves, magic bullet looks, and lumetri color. Some clips might require slight adjustments, so be sure to cut the adjustment layer and make slight changes to these effects to fix areas that might look too dark, saturated, or overexposed. Your goal is to keep a consistent look through the whole video. It's tedious, but it's what makes your edit refined. When you have completed a pass to verify there are no issues with the video, CC or audio, then make sure you select the entire work area of your composition by pressing B at the start and N at the end. This determines how much is going to be rendered from the composition. Make sure to save your project one last time. Now, you're ready to add this to your render queue. Use the drop-down menu File, Greater Than Export, Greater Than Add to Render Queue, or simply press Ctrl plus M. As you can see, there is one video in the queue. You should now see the blue highlighted text next to where it says Output Module. This will open the Output Settings, where you get to select Encoders and Format options. These are what determine how the video is going to be compressed. Each serve multiple purposes. The three we are going to focus on are Lossless, QuickTime, H.264. I will explain the general information for each. Lossless is uncompressed and results in extremely large file sizes, usually over 10 gigabytes easily. It contains lots of wasteful space that will quickly fill your storage devices. You don't need this. On the other hand, there's MP4, or commonly referred to as H.264, a standard and largely accepted file type which is stable for all platforms. But, its flaws are that it's a compressed output with lower bit rates. It is used to make file sizes smaller and easier for playback, but may incur some pixelation and artifacts, especially in dark high contrast areas, or cause blurry footage. Our goal is to render in high quality, with almost no compression have a high bit rate, and avoid having unreasonable file sizes when exporting. The perfect format for this is known as QuickTime. When combined with the format option ProRes 422HQ, you have discovered the perfect output module. We will be using this when rendering our final AMV with After Effects. You can also change the audio output to 32-bit though this may not be noticeable. Finally, click the big Render button and wait for your video to finish. While this renders, let's go over some details about achieving that crisp but clean 4K look you've been struggling to get. We use a program called Topaz AI Enhancer. It is used to upscale and clean up details in your media. I personally use the version 3.3.3, Models can be updated or provide different results depending on the version, but I recommend finding the same one as me. Once our video has finished exporting, let's import it into Topaz. At the top right side, you'll see a panel with all the settings. We are going to set the upscale to 3840 by 2160, or 2 by with original FPS. This is the 4K resolution. Next, we will scroll down and enable the Enhancement filter. 
Follow the settings displayed on the screen. These are important. Your settings may need to be adjusted, depending on the amount or type of effects in your AMV. The main sliders that should be adjusted are Revert Compression and Anti-Alias slash D-Blur if you intend to keep details such as grain slash noise effects from being artificially blurred or removed. If your video does not have such effects, then feel free to keep the sliders at a higher amount. Otherwise, copy what you see on the screen. Lastly, you should adjust the amount of sharpness depending on the amount you applied beforehand in After Effects. If you had heavy sharpness in your CC, then I recommend to keep the sharpness low in Topaz. Personally, I avoid applying heavy sharpness in After Effects, keeping it low around 10 to 20, then setting the sharpness to 24 in my Topaz settings, so it does not look over-sharpened by the end. With that done, the last thing you need to do is copy the export settings as you see on screen. Like After Effects, we are also going to use the encoder ProRes and 422HQ. So this export will also be high in bitrate and keep as much detail without compression as we can get. We will set the audio mode to copy so it will not mess with our audio and set our container to MOV. Feel free to click the preview button on various parts of the AMV to check you're happy with the result. There's multiple viewing options and the ability to scroll into and out of the image. Likewise, you can move the white line left and right to see the original versus upscaled preview. Finally, click Export and wait for the file to finish. I would like to share some very useful knowledge now, as you may know. Some file types may struggle or refuse to render or open in the default Windows Media Player, like .mov. You may be trying to solve that issue by converting the file to a playable format, like MP4. Well, don't do this. Please go to the description and follow the link named KLite Codec you will see three blue clickable links under Download. Click on Server 1 to download this media player. Go to Windows Settings, find Default Apps, and under the Video Player and Music Player, replace the default with MPCHC. This way you will avoid the issue of having to convert files to a playable format. View the thumbnails of all file types, and there's extra features such as being able to switch between audio files or enable disable subtitles if the video has it. Thank me later. Another thing very important for having high quality is choosing the correct raw footage so you're not working with files where defects or issues are already baked in before you even open it in After Effects. To correct the mistake, you should only download 8 or 10-bit episodes. This is the highest bit rate available for anime. I personally like to download the kind where each episode is roughly 1 or 1.2 gigabytes. Though this may be excessive, it's for the purpose of having pristine quality. All I ask is that you avoid downloading low bit rate files. To identify this, you can open the Properties section by right-clicking on the file and looking for details. If it's is 4,000 kilobits per second total, it is a 4-bit episode. Another indicator will be the file size, typically 300 megabytes. Most scene pack makers use this and go a step further when rendering, by compressing it even more leaving your clips about 1 to 5 megabytes per clip. This is awful. You cannot achieve decent quality with these clips. You will have very noticeable quality deterioration in lines, color variances, or even worse, the pixelated low bitrate effect. 
effect, causing squares that cause colors to shift or create an ugly noise. It's prominent in dark areas. So be a good boy and avoid this by downloading a high bitrate, high file size raw anime episode. You'll find them on torrent websites. Now for the best part. Your Topaz video has finished exporting. You've watched it and are satisfied. Now all that is left is to upload this incredibly large file to YouTube and only YouTube. The platform accepts the MOV file type and large file sizes. It will still perform a slight degree of compression on its own, but you'll have the true 4K AMV result that you have always wanted. But wait, I can't post this to TikTok or Instagram. You are absolutely correct. There's one more step for those platforms. You need to compress the file using Media Encoder. Here comes in MP4 or H.264 TikTok and Instagram require this. Follow the instructions on screen and pay close attention to the boxes or file types I am clicking. These are crucial. Now I would like to explain something really quick. You must change it from VBR1 pass to VBR2 pass. This does two passes on the render compression to make sure your dark colors are rendered at higher bitrate so your quality looks much cleaner. Two sliders will appear. One, target bitrate, and two, maximum bitrate. The target is the number at which the bitrate is being compressed to, and the maximum is the number that adds more details into the second pass for fixing pixelated dark areas or high contrast. If you observe the text at the bottom, estimated, file size, this number will increase or decrease depending on how much you adjust the two sliders. Now, follow these two rules. Your maximum bitrate slider should be 10 to 15 megabits per second larger than the target bitrate in megabits per second. And you must make sure that the estimated file size stays between 170 to 190 megabytes. I prefer 190 megabytes. This is basically the very limit for what platforms like TikTok and Instagram allow you to post. And the hard truth, TikTok unlocks the quality of your edit in stages. The resolution is locked in stages based on how much views, engagement your video is getting. It goes through testing stages to determine if the algorithm keeps pushing the video out to more people, affecting the quality like checkpoints. They default to a 540p upload initially, and at certain threshold numbers like 250, they will unlock 720p. Somewhere between 500 to 1000 views, they will then unlock 1080p. You should also make sure there's an option when posting that has Enable High Quality Post Upload checked. For me, this option only appears on my iPhone. So I need to send the video to my phone through Google Drive or Telegram. Then I can post using the TikTok app. Instagram might be a little different but it's usually fine to post my compressed video directly on the web browser from my PC. Well, that's all for today. You now understand all the information that's required for high quality. Please be kind and show your appreciation by leaving a like and commenting to boost the engagement on my video so it can reach more uneducated editors.